When I was a young boy, I used to play baseball in my backyard or in the street with my brothers or the neighborhood kids. We used broken bats and plastic golf balls and played for hours and hours. My favorite team was the San Francisco Giants, and many of those players that were on that team are here today. I'd try to pitch like Juan Marichal or Gaylord Perry, and try to hit like Willie Mays, Orlando Cepeda, or Willie McCovey. After those games, when I'd go home at night, oftentimes I'd dream of being a major league player. I was lucky that dream came true. I would dream of hitting a home run in the World Series or playing in an All-Star game. I was lucky those dreams came true. I had dreams of catching the ball for the final out in the World Series and being mobbed by my teammates. Well, I guess all my dreams didn't come true. <laughs> but what I'd really like to tell you is I never dreamed of being in the Hall of Fame. Standing here with all these great players was beyond any of my dreams. I can't begin to tell you what an honor it is to be up here with these guys. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the other inductees, Bob Stevens on his award, and the late Arch McDonald, Joe Williams, Frank Seeley, and Nestor Shylock on their accomplishments. You know, when I was 18 years old, I spent the day in a rowboat fishing with Nolan Ryan. There wasn't a lot of conversation that day. On the field, he let his pitching do the talking. I never faced a pitcher with better stuff than Nolan Ryan. When I was 19, I went to Puerto Rico to play winter ball, and one of my teammates was Orlando Cepeda. He went out of his way to make a young kid a long way from home feel comfortable. It was certainly a great thrill to play with someone you used to, Im to imitate as a kid. And George Brett. I think most people know that George and I have become pretty good friends over the years. But even before that, George was the guy I used to watch and say, man, I wish I could play like that guy. With a fun-loving attitude and a burning desire to win, nobody played the game any harder than George. He is what baseball is all about. I couldn't have hand-picked a better class to go to Cooperstown with. Congratulations to all of you. You know, no one ever accomplishes something like this without a lot of help from good people along the way. And this is certainly true in my case, and I'd like to thank some of those people. When I started out in Little League, I was lucky enough to be drafted by a gentleman named Clem Cohen, who at the time I didn't know. He's a guy who knows and loves the game of baseball. He also knows and loves kids. Clem Cohen got me started on the right foot and we still remain close friends today. My high school coach was Ray O'Connor. He's coached a lot of players that have signed professional contracts, and many of those have gone on to play in the major leagues. In 73, I graduated high school and was lucky enough again to be drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers, a fairly new organization at the time trying to establish itself in the American League. In spring training of 74, I went, to, I went with the Major League Club and the manager was Del Crandall. Fortunately, he saw enough potential in a raw 18-year-old kid to give me a chance. I'm grateful for that. And the hitting coach at the time was the late Harvey Keene, who a few years later became the manager of that club. Harvey and I developed a very close relationship 
early on, and that relationship grew with time. He taught me more about the game of baseball, both on and off the field, than anyone. I was also lucky to play for an owner, Bud Selig, who truly cared about his players. He'd call me into his office once in a while when he knew things weren't going so well. And it's funny, every time I left there, I always felt like something good was about to happen. You know, over 20 years, I played for a number of managers and dozens of coaches. I don't know any of them that I didn't learn something from to help make me a better player. But some of my favorites were George Bamberger, Frank Howard, Tom Treblehorn, Sam Suplesio, Renee Latchman, and Phil Garner. I was also very lucky to be a, a teammate of two of the greatest players to have ever played the game. I learned very early on by playing for Frank Robinson and with Henry Aaron that even the greatest players in the game were just one of the guys. And without the many other teammates that I had over the years, none of this could have happened. Hitting around guys like Paul Molitor, Cecil Cooper, Ted Simmons, Gorman Thomas, Sal Bando, Larry Heisel, and Ben Ogilvy, just to name a few, certainly contributed to my career. And to have teammates like Raleigh Fingers, Pete Vukovic, Ed Sprague, Bob McClure, Moose Haas, Charlie Moore, Jimmy Gantner, Dale Swain, Rob D. I could go on forever. But to have guys like this, not only as teammates, but as friends, made it where I couldn't wait to go to the ballpark every day. And one of those guys, not exactly a teammate, but definitely one of the guys, and a great friend, he's here today, Bob Euchre. And believe it or not, Bob Euchre played a significant role in me being here today. My family, starting with my mom and dad, they were at every game when I was a kid. My mom would usually make me a pregame meal. She was always sewing up my torn uniform. She'd even play catch with me if I asked her to. My dad was always there too. If I needed some batting practice, he was there to throw it to me. If I needed some ground balls, he was hit, there to hit them to me. I can remember hanging a tarp from the swing set in the backyard, using it for a backstop. My dad would throw to me and I'd hit the ball and hopefully it'd hit one of the walnut trees in the yard and stay in our yard. You know, we lost a lot of balls that way. My brother Larry, he taught me how hard work and dedication to the game was the only way to make it. He's taken care of all my business activities for me and my family for many years, and I thank him for that. My brother Jim, he's the lighthearted one. I never had to worry about getting a big head with him around. With his sense of humor, he'd always put me in my place. And to his wife, Cheryl, who's not feeling so well, they couldn't be here this weekend. Cheryl, you hang in there. We'll have our own party when I get home. You know, raising a family in the lifestyle of a professional athlete can be very difficult. I know during the baseball season, I usually had blinders on to anything but the game. I took for granted that family matters would take care of themselves and Oftentimes I was there physically, but mentally my mind was always on the game. I realize now what a great job my wife Michelle did, not only in raising our children, Melissa, Amy, Dustin, and Jenna, but in taking care of me, and I love you all very much. And to all my friends out there, and many of you have come a long way to be here today, and you fans out there, thank you for making this such an incredible day. Okay. 
Now's the time where I'm supposed to wake up from all of this. I mean, it's okay. It's been a great dream. But if, in fact, this is reality, then with all due respect, Mr. Garrick, today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. You know, as great a day as this is for us up here, we have to remember there are people out there who are hurting. We're often reminded how quickly things can be taken from us. My heart goes out to the families of the men who lost their lives in the construction of the new stadium in Milwaukee. The game of life can sometimes be too short, so play it with everything you've got. Thank you very much.